Hello internet people, welcome back to another episode of Casa Industries, hope you're all doing stupendously. We're going to be back on the FG today, getting some more work cranked out on it. I'll show you what we're doing. First port of call for today is I'm going to do this rocker cover gasket. It's the, we already addressed one of the oil leaks in the last video, doing the front crank seal, but the harmonic balance, uh, sorry, the rocker cover gasket is leaking. You can see a little bit of oil residue around the, the gap there. This is after I have already pressure washed this thing and I've only just moved it around the property a little bit since then. So yeah, it did have a fairly, or does have a fairly decent leak. So the first thing we're gonna do is pull this plastic um, engine cover off to exp expose the coil packs. So you've got to undo all of these bolts that sort of are around the place. Uh, we'll take the PCV hose off and the breather hose and also the oil cap has to come off to get this cover off and then I normally just put the oil cap back on. So first things first, we'll get that off. Our new rocker cover gasket is just chilling over there. So yeah, we'll get into that. Okay, engine cover is off. We've got the breather hose just chilling up there. The PCV hose is just tucked out of the way. Sorry about the background noise, guys. I do have the fan on because it's another hot day. So now we're going to go through and unplug all of our wiring. So we'll unplug our cam sensors, our coil packs, and move the harness out of the way. And we'll also um, unbolt all of our coil packs and get them out of the way as well. Cool. Got all that crap out of the way. I've just cable tied the harness off, off to the side for now. So now you can see sort of the bare rocker cover. Hey, mate. So now what we've got to do is just unbolt these cam sensor plates two 8 mil bolts each side. Got a couple of Torx bolts at the front here and then a bunch of 10 mil bolts sort of going down through the middle. Do all of that and then the rocker cover should just pop straight off. Sweet, got it all pulled apart. It's all cleaned up, sort of ready to go back together. There's just a little bracket up here that bolts to the back of the rocker cover, which I forgot to tell you guys about. Also on FGs, one thing that I knew about but I forgot in a moment of lapse of brain power is the cam sensors actually pull out on FGs whereas on BAs and BFs the sensors stay in the car and just the plates come off so that's that now the other thing is I do believe everyone has an inner 18 year old and as a result of that this has happened yeah it just sort of happened eh? so I had a little bit of red engine enamel left over so I've just gone around and sprayed the areas that the engine cover don't cover essentially yes i know turbos have the red rocker cover and this is not that but it is now red so it will go faster the other thing i want to point out as well with rocker cover gaskets you can buy just the rocker cover gasket itself or you can buy a rocker cover gasket kit which the kit comes with um, the seals that go on the spark plug tubes um, my supplier didn't have the kit in stock which is why i just went the gasket i normally do uh, the kit, um, but I will just put a little bit of uh, uh, sicker flex on the surface of those. And you also need to make sure you put a blob of sicker flex where the timing cover meets the cylinder head right there and right there as well. So we'll start going through and getting it all back together, and I'll touch base with you probably when it's done. Well, it's all done and all back together, and you know what? I actually really love how it's turned out. Nice, beautiful gloss finish. Looks really, really good. It's made the whole engine bay of the car really pop. Then just looks a whole lot neater. And best thing of all is it doesn't leak now, which is the biggest win of all. But yeah, really like how that's turned out with that red rocker cover. Do not regret doing it at all. You may hate it, but I like it. But it's not your car. But if it is your car and you don't like the red, if you end up buying it, you let me know what color you want me to paint it and I will paint it whatever color you like. Anyways, on to the next job. Continuing with our service items, we are going to slap a new air filter in this thing, which is just inside the air box here. Last time we did a throttle body clean um, in the last video. To get the air filter out, you've just got these Torx head screws, four of them on the outside of the air box. So super simple to just undo them, lift the air box lid out and get the filter out. Nice and easy, air box is up and out of the way, filters out. There's some leaves and stuff in the air box, which I've cleaned out and gave that a quick vacuum. Here is our old filter here. As you can see in the webbing, there's quite a bit of crap in there. And here's our new filter. So yeah, definitely worthwhile changing, was due to be done. So we'll slap that back in. And then all that's left service-wise on this car is to do an oil and oil filter change on it on the engine. Uh, and then everything on this car major service-wise is done with the exception of spark plugs. As I said previously, they get done every 100,000 K, so they're not yet due. So 
yeah, that'll be good. So we'll put that all back together and we'll lift the car up and we'll get the oil draining on it. Car's back up. We'll do the oil and oil filter on it. You can do this in whichever order you like. The oil filter is sitting up there. I've got a new Ryko filter sitting down there for it. And you drain the oil from here. So I always start with the filter. I have had comments of people saying, oh, why do you start with the filter? It'll get old oil in the new filter when you put it on. Well, that's not true. Oil only gets pumped into the filter when the engine's running. So you can do it in whichever order you like. So I'll just grab it and see how tight this is. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. Anyway, we'll let this uh, drain for a bit. I'll throw a new filter on it and then we'll start draining the oil. Ah, uh, there's always something. I've got the new oil filter on. Got the oil draining, but this sun plug was really hard to get out the whole way out. And looks like someone's been chewing on it. She's a bit stuffed. So I need to get a new sun plug now. Righty, I got my new sun plug. And I tried to retap the thread, but it was completely stuffed. So I've just had to helicoil it. You can see inside on the back side of that how stuffed it actually was. So yeah, hopefully it doesn't leak. We'll guess we'll see how we go. But yeah, we'll throw it back in, put some fresh oil into it, and we'll take the car for a drive and just check that everything's all good. Pour in some fresh liquid gold, get the thing started up and we'll recheck the oil level. Oh, and the, uh, the new bonnet struts turned up just before too. So I've just quickly thrown them on. So that's exciting. No more bonnet hold clamp thing. Anyway, we'll give this thing a start and see how we are. Right, yeah. Oil is done. Give it a look, see. Focus, focus. But anyway, it's full. All right, under the back of the car now, and we're gonna start addressing a few of the issues that are happening in the rear suspension, starting with these rear sway bar bushes. As you can see, they are quite crushed up and cracked and hanging out the side. So we've got some Pedders Nolothane replacements to go on them. The Pedders kit also comes with a little ferrule bush that goes in the bottom of this, but they are a little bit tricky to get out. And unless they are splitting, which in this case they are not, I generally tend to not replace them. I'll just do these upper ones. So there's one on top of this lower arm and one that goes up on the inside in there. And it's just a matter of undoing these two nuts, swinging the sway bar down, swapping the rubbers over and putting it back together. So it's pretty easy. Um, I'll show you what it looks like once it's apart, but this is the kit to do those rear bushes. So these are the ones that go above and below the arms. And these are the little feral bushes here, which you can change if you want to, uh, but unless they're failed, I generally don't. There's the part number of the kit. So yeah, we'll get into it. All right, got the sway bar dropped down and the old bushes are out. As you can see, you do actually have to pry the old ones out because they are a one piece bush that sort of cup around that mount. So now it's just a matter of grabbing the new ones. So, slipping them on sort of like that. Then that can swing up back into place and then you put the other bush on the top and then tighten the top nut up and then that's the job done. And there we have it, they are done. On to the next job. Next job is rear bump stops, another super simple job. There's like a little mm, appendage that sticks down from the K-frame that the bump stop just pushes up onto. As you can see, these ones are stuffed. They just sort of pull and twist off and then you can get the new one on. I normally just give it a squirt with WD-40 before I get it on. Here's one already done. So now we'll go through and do this one. So that's what it looks like removed and done. Next. Last thing we need to do in the rear end, besides tires anyway, is these upper heim joints or rose joints are noisy. So it's barely making any noise on that side, but this one's quite noisy. If you give it a give it a shake for us, Isaac. You can hear that knock. And if you look closely enough, you can actually see the movement in the joint. So this will give you like a metallic knocking sound when you're driving. So we need to basically get this all apart and we'll get the wheels off and I'll show you how you go about changing them. All right, so this is our culprit joint here that's giving us all the drama. So you can do these in car, but for the sake of two bolts, the other inner one in there, 
we're just going to remove both bolts and take the arm out of the car to change that joint. Rightio, got the arm out. I did have to loosen the top caliper bolt because the bolt that goes through there hits that bolt when you try and take it out. Arm is in my hand and here is the affected joint. So now we'll head over to the bench and get about removing that. The arm in the vise and got my trusty G-clamp press all set up. These are a press in joint. This is what the new joint looks like here. That boot sits on there, but I do take that off to press on this lip. There is a chamfered end and a square end. You want to go in with the chamfered end first. Sometimes these come out easily, sometimes they don't. But yeah, I've got this all set up. We'll start tightening it up and see what happens. Boom. Due to the magic of filming that's in, I forgot to press record when I was pressing the new one in, so I do apologize for that. But anyway, now we've just got to refit this arm to the car and we'll do the same on the other side. All right, this side is all back together. There's a new joint in there. Arms all in and tight. What we need to do now is repeat the same thing over here. And they're all done. Do need to point out though, I could not remove uh, that arm from the car. I had to do that rose joint in the car. Uh, because the inner bolt doesn't come out because there's a fuel tank in the way and i also want to point out that when you tighten up these bolts on the inners and the outers the back of the car doesn't need to be at right height so we normally put a stand underneath the rear um sort of subframe sort of around here or even under the shock mount just to lift it up and get the car close to right height as possible i also know that i said that was going to be the last thing we do on the rear end but i actually told you a lie we also need to do these blade bushes up in here. So this is the blade arm or the forward trailing arm. And that is the blade bush that sits up in there. It's a bit hard to see, but that bush, there's a section that goes through the middle of that round opening or that round bush. And that's supposed to be roughly in the middle. As you can see, it's favored towards the bottom. And that's because the bush is failing. So if I actually pry it on this and push it across, I don't know if you can actually see the cracks in the rubber. But you can see it's all fallen apart. And if you look on the bottom there, you can actually see witness marks where this section of the bush has been hidden sort of down here. So, and that gives you like a, a metallic thud as well. So to do this properly, you are supposed to have a hydraulic press to press the old ones out, which I don't have. And I normally go down and use my mate Rick's, um, but his one is broken. So we're gonna try and do this in a vise by cutting the old ones out and putting the new ones in. These are the new ones here. Again, they're a Pettis unit, part number is EP7205. Eh, why can't I get it out? And that's them there, so they're an upgraded urethane bush. Um, the factory ones are semi-voided on the side where these are a solid urethane bush, and they also come with uh, new aluminium bars as well. So let's get these arms out of the car. The first thing I need to do is drop the car down and pull the back seat out back seat out it comes out pretty easily you just sort of push down back and then up on each side of the back seat and it comes out the reason why we need to do that which you might find a bit strange is because this plug right here there's one each side these are your rear abs sensor plugs and they actually pass through those blade arms that we need to remove so it's not really possible to remove them unless this is out so we just go through and unplug these you poke it through the floor and we'll go back under the car got the abs harness just hanging down under the car now so that basically that clip goes in there and then it passes through that hole and then that clip pushes in from that side and then it goes up through the floor through there so now we'll just go through and remove this arm so we've got these three bolts here which are 15 mil i think and these two up here which are 18 mil i think so we've got the arm out of the car it's just sitting in the vice i just hit my head on this tire behind me anyway so the way we're going to do this is not the right way to do it, but we're just going to try and get it done. Anyway, we're going to cut the bush through here and here. As I said before, this is a semi-void bush, so there is a gap in the bottom and the top, and it's just sort of joined on these sides. So we're going to cut the side bits of rubber out to get the center out of the bush, and then we're going to try and cut the actual sleeve of the bush to try and get it out. See how we go. We've got the center of the bush out. So now I'm just going to try and start cutting through here trying not to cut too deep so I don't want to get the frame of the arm and try and get that bush out. Cool, got it out. I did slightly scratch the bottom there, but I'm not too concerned about that at all. 
We'll get this all cleaned up now, lube it up, and we'll try and press that in by, I reckon just by squashing it in the vise or something. I don't know, we'll figure it out together. Hey, look at that, it's done. All we did is just basically squash it together in the vise and it popped straight in. So yeah, happy days. We'll refit that to the car and then we'll do the other side. All right, this side is all done and finished, all looking awesome. It is worth noting as well that there is a recess and you know what, I'll just show you on this. One side of the bush, bush has a recess in it, the other side does not. The recess has to go to the outside and then the pin that goes through, it's got a step here and the step goes, that step goes against that recess. So now it's just a matter of doing rinse and repeat on this side. We've already got the harness off and the three bolts undone. I just wanted to show you how lol this is, how much it flops around with the factory bush. It's really not great. So yeah, how good. Alrighty, so that is all done. Looking good. So we basically got those rear blade bushes done. We've got the rear sway bar links done. We've got the rear bump stops done. And we've got those rear upper rose joints done up in there. We've got Isaac putting the wheels on now. And then we're going to get the car down because it's going to head off to the detailer to get the paint correction done. And when we get it back, we'll address front end suspension. And then this thing's pretty much ready to go. And we're back. Just got the FG back from being detailed and it's come up looking really really good for how it looked before to how it looks now is very very different all the cloudiness in the bonnet is gone it's full gloss now all the cloudiness in the roof which was really really bad is all gone acid wash the wheels which have come up looking like new so yeah the whole car just looks completely different now lots of gloss lots of shine so he spent quite a lot of time on the body. Interior-wise, we didn't bother too much. It was just basically a quick once-over, quick vac. Didn't worry about sort of like uh, steam cleaning the seats or anything like that. Just because of budget side of things. So it was just basically a quick vacuum and go over the dash and give the windows a quick wipe down. But yeah, body-wise, it looks really good. You can actually see your reflection in it now. Hi. <laughs> Yeah, was that? I don't know if you remember what the roof and stuff looked like before, but they looked like this. So quite the difference now. So yeah, very happy with that. So as far as list of things still to do on this car are concerned, uh, we still need to put some front struts in it and we're gonna put some new front bump stops in it shortly as well. Um, there was slight plan that left-hand front wheel, which may be a wheel bearing. I need to look into that a little bit more. Um, and we've got to put tires on it and get a wheel alignment with all the suspension work and stuff we've done. So I also want to do a headlight restoration as well, because these are still looking a little bit dull, but we'll pick that up in a few days, a week. I don't know, whenever, whenever we've got time. Rightio guys, we're back on the Falcon quickly this morning. I'm just going to do a headlight restoration on this thing real quick before I start work. I have, um gone through in detail how I do this in the past, but I'm just gonna go through super quick to show you the process on how I restore headlights. First things first, mask up the edges. Second thing second, give it a bit of a sand down with some sandpaper. This is 800 grit, you can use even a thousand if you want. Just trying to knock off the loose scaly bits off the light. Once it's sanded, we go over it with the Yellow X treatment pad. And this gets the yellowing out of the plastic. Once you've scrubbed it with the yellow treatment, you wash it down and dry it with a towel. Then I dry it with a heat gun. Once it's all dry, you go over it with the UV clear coat which is just an applicator pad. Take the tape off and all done. That's how they look. It's a new day. It's actually a new afternoon and we are going to throw the front struts into this Falcon. It's another item to do on the list. I also thought that we might need to do a wheel bearing in this left-hand front as it was just a tiny little bit of play, but it's actually the tie rod end, which is right here, the ball joint socket in the tie rod end is on its way out so i've got a tie rod end coming for this tomorrow morning i won't actually replace the tie rod end myself though it's going tomorrow morning to get tires and a wheel alignment done 
uh, and I'll get my wheel on. I've got to throw the tire end on it while the car's down there. Um, he's going to have the front wheels off anyway to do the tires. I have already rotated the tires front to back, but I'll put the ones that were on the front on the back. So our bold tires that were on the back are now here ready to go on the front. And I've got my, hello, Jason. Hi. And I've got my new tires down here ready to go as well. So that's that. So we're going to throw some new front struts in it. Um, this one is not too bad, uh, but this one is leaking quite severely. So you can see it is quite damp because it's blown the top seal out and also the front bump stops are starting to get a bit chewed out as well. So we'll do them at the same time. As you know, I'm a big fan of if you're replacing something and you can upgrade it for not much more money to do so. So we are going Pedder's sports line range of struts being an XR6. I thought this might be a good little upgrade. Just as we upgraded, like everything we replaced bushwise and stuff replaced in the back, we went to Nolothane. I'm gonna carry over the same attitude with doing the front struts. Pedders do have a black range of struts, which is sort of their cheaper range. They're perfectly fine, they do the job. If this was just like a base model Falcon, I probably would use them as well. But yeah, being an XR, I thought I'd go the sports range and we've got some new bump stops to go on as well. So yeah, we'll just start getting it apart and I'll show you what we need to do as we start pulling it apart. So to pull struts out the front of an FG, first thing you need to do is loosen this bolt for the upper control arm to the knuckle and then that bolt will slide out from the side. You can then get a pry bar to just pry the upper arm off the knuckle, so the ball joint will slide out. Then you need to undo the lower shock bolt down here and completely remove that as well. You can undo the sway bar link if you like, just to get a little bit more leverage out of the lower arm. However, I find you don't normally need to. And then there's three bolts up top. So we'll get all this stuff apart down here first, and then we'll lower the car down and show you the bolts up top. So top arm is out, while well, the ball joint is out of the knuckle rather, and the lower strut bolt is out as well, just got that hanging to the side. And then we'll undo the three bolts up the top, and then you can just sort of like pull down on this a bit with your hand, and it's enough to just sneak the strut out past the, the lower arm here to get the strut out of the car. Looking at the top of the strut now here, and you've got these three 17 mil nuts that we need to undo to get the top of the strut out. On the driver's side, you do need to take the intake pipe off to give you a bit more access. Passenger side, the bottles are underneath the bottles. The bolts are underneath the coolant bottle. So we'll get these three out and get the strut out of the car. Strut is out of the car, sitting in the vise. Now you can see a bit more how yuck it is. So now we'll go through and set up the spring compressor, spring compressor tools. Some people say you shouldn't use these on Falcons. These are the heavy duty type. Uh, these are more designed for four drive springs. I probably wouldn't recommend using just the standard type screw ones uh, as they can probably bend and bind up but i've done several um, falcon struts with these spring compressors and never had an issue so i'll get it set up and show you what it looks like all set up this is what it looks like set up got them opposite each other with the bits that you tighten from on the bottom so we'll just wind that up now crack that top nut remove that get the spring out and get the new one set up rightio old strut stripped apart jason's just wiping the schmutz off the spring New strut set up with the new bump stop on. New strut assembled. Fantastic, now all I've got to do is just throw it back in the car. Mad, it's all back together, all in and looking good. So now all that's left is to do this, oh. Well, okay, we'll just throw the wheels on then. Alrighty, it's a few days later again, uh, after we took the car down to get tires and a wheel alignment done and got that tire right end done. So all that's basically left now is I'm just going to go through and check over the whole car, make sure everything's still looking good, make sure nothing's leaking. I've been driving the car for the last few days, done about 250Ks in it. So it's a good test to just go through and just check everything is all good. Uh, this afternoon, the car is going for a roadworthy um, because the car is actually now sold. So just sold it to my friend's brother. So um, he was looking for something and this ticked all the boxes that he wanted and we struck a good deal. So... We'll just go through and start checking things. I'll probably start with checking this rocker cover gasket here. Just make sure nothing's leaking, which it's not. That's all looking great. We've got no moisture down the front of the engine here where that crank seal was leaking. No oil is spraying around, which is great. Coolant level is good. I'll just check brake fluid level and engine oil level, and then we'll lift the car up and have a look underneath. So I've basically just gone through and done a nut and bolt check on everything on this car that we've touched. 
So from all of the suspension repairs in the rear to steering repairs in the front, oil leak stuff, service items, sun plug, all of that stuff has all been checked and everything is all still tight. Nothing is leaking. If you remember the whole front of the engine was drenched with oil from that crank seal leaking before. The rear was all wet back here. So that's all still looking good. Honestly, I was expecting there to be a little bit of a rear main oil leak as most barriers do have a slight leak from the rear main. Um, but this thing is still dry as a bone, so that's fantastic. Got that tire right end on that had a little bit of play on it, uh, play in it. Got the new front tires on, well, the tires that were originally on the front of the drift car, which are still pretty much brand new. So they're done, and everything on this car is looking awesome. And that, my friends, is going to wrap up the two-part uh, build series or repair series on this car. I really hope that you've enjoyed it. If there's things of similar stuff that you need to do to your cars, I hope I've explained it in a way that you can understand. Uh, this thing has come up really 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 good it drives amazingly well as i said i've been driving it for the past few days and i'm actually starting to fall in love with it a little bit it's a shame that it's sold um but you can't keep everything but it's turned out to be such a great car and it's going on to someone um that's close to us and it's going to be a really good car for them so i hope that you've enjoyed the two-part um series on this car if you want to see more videos like this please remember to like and subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next video very soon until that time be good to yourselves and each other